written by a man named Walter Brueggemann. Now, after quoting Exodus chapter 2, verses 23 to 25, which says, And the people of Israel groaned under their bondage and cried out for help. And their cry under bondage came up to God. And God heard their groaning, and God remembered the covenant. And after quoting this, Walter Brueggemann goes on to write, Thus the history of Israel begins on the day when its people no longer address the Egyptian gods who will not listen and cannot answer. When I read this statement, it kind of stepped my heart. It felt scary. And so I grabbed my Bible and read through the story of the Exodus, which is found in Exodus chapters 1 to 14. <clears throat> Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Honorable members of the Legislative Assembly, and the princes of the Church. Today, allow me to retell the story of the Exodus. When I read through the story of the Exodus, I realized that Israel in the 13th century was about to be obliterated of its existence. They had no power. They had nothing whatsoever. And on the other hand, the Egyptian Empire was in full bloom, in full power. They could do anything they want. But when those in power refused to listen to the cry of the people, when the people stopped crying to those in power and started crying to the unseen one, when the people stopped crying to those in power and started crying to their Father in heaven, and when those people in power wouldn't listen to the cry of the people, when they turned to their Father who is in heaven, the one who is invisible began to intervene. And the story tells us that in the beginning, when Aaron turned his stick into a snake, when water was turned into blood, and when the land was made full of frogs, the research and development people of the state, of the Egyptian state, were also able to match those powerful works of Aaron and Moses. They were also able to turn their stick into snakes. They were also able to turn water into blood. And they were also able to make frogs come out of the land. But then the third black comes around. Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth. And there came nuts on man and on beast. All the dust of the earth became nuts throughout the land of Egypt. And this time, the state could no more match this power. The magicians tried their secret arts to bring forth nuts, but they could not. This time, the Egyptian empire could not. The scientists of the empire could not. The spinners of the state could not. The magicians of the empire could not. The non-gods of Egypt could not. The false claim of being divinely placed on the chairs of power collapsed. And the imperial state religion failed. 
In Exodus chapter 5, verse 8 and 5, 15, there was still a cry to the Pharaoh. They went and they cried to the Pharaoh and said, Therefore they cried, Let us go and offer sacrifice to our God. The four men of the people of Israel came and cried to the Pharaoh, Why do you treat your servants like this? In those two verses, the people were still crying to the people who were in power. But the empire, the state, the state said, let have your work be laid open the man, that they may live at it and pay no regard to the lying words. And so the taskmasters and the foremen of the people, they went out and said to the people, thus says Pharaoh, and by the middle of the black cycle, Israel disengaged with the empire. Yes, once the people were crying to the state for relief, for justice, and for fairness, but when the, the state wouldn't hear their cries, when their state tur the state turned a blind eye to the suffering of the people, when the state refused to pay attention to the troubles of the people, then the people disengaged from the empire, from the state. And the people cries no more to the state, expects nothing of it, acknowledges it in no way, knows it cannot keep its promises, and knows that nothing is expected of it or nothing is owed to it. The grief cry leaves. The grief cry learns to turn away from the false listeners and turn to the one who can help. And when I read this story, that this grieving cry stopped crying to the state. When I read the story of the grieving cry turning away from the false listeners who cannot keep their promises, and turn to the one who listens, the one who could help. It felt scary to me because the story sounds so familiar to our own story. What if the people disengage from those who are in power in the church and in the state? What if the grieving cry turns away from the false listeners, both in the state and in the church? Because the cries are never heard, and the speaking men, the speaking are never answered. What if the grieving cry turns away from those of us who cannot keep our promises? and turns to the unseen one who listens and who helps. What if it comes to the point that one day God would say, I have seen the afflictions of my people and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings and I have come to help to deliver them. Come, I will send you. I don't want to talk how the story ends. It's scary. But I also know that it is incredulous to even think that God would do any such thing in that way. After hearing three from the three speakers, I think we have learned few lessons what we have been doing and what we are trying to do now. But before I go deeper to the subject matter, 
I would like to see revealed how I have started my political career. For those of you who have seen this, uh, my documentary, my political career so far, you, you may be aware. When I entered into politics, the real election, 1982, I had nothing but 13 villages, they have had a meeting and then the, they have decided that I should contest from that locality. Then I say I have nothing, but they say, you, you need not spend money, we will do everything. So when the 13 villages came out openly, I have decided to go to the fray, which my family members, including my wife, did not agree on. You don't have money, how do you face that? But 13 villages, they said they'll vote for me and they'll work for me. And as election campaign went on, after a few days, the trend has started changing. That the resolution signed by all the 13 villages, two villages declared to support another candidate. Then I got shot. Later on, my own village was divided into two parts. After I came back from long campaign, just approaching the polling day, I got shot. Why? After the result was announced, out of that, those 13 villages, I got nil in three villages. Why? Started going. Because they want money, I could not give. They demanded some surveys, I could not commit. That, that was the reason that I was defeated during 1982, my first election. Then I started going into this uh, timber business to earn money for election. Then second attempt, 1987, I lost by 53 votes. So I could spend something more, that is why I nearly won the see, election. Now I have learned that I should do. Next, how to win? I mean, I have to spend more, then I will get more. That formula came into my mind. Then there was President rule. After eight months, election took place, 1989. First time I got elected. See, the trend goes on like this. That is why, as mentioned by the former speakers, where to start? From where? Because 1963, when we got a statehood, the first election must have been a very clean election. Because people do not have money and people don't demand from the candidate also. But till today, after crossing this 53, 54 years now, the white cloth stained by all the black spot or the dirty. The white cloth had turned into brown or if not black. The how to clean this cloth is we cannot think of starting point. If there is little dirt in the white cloth, then to clean that we can apply any kind of this. Sir, or petrol or any kind of chemicals can clean. But when the whole cloth is already turned into brown or black, then how to clean? This is what we have to ponder very seriously. In the first place, 
I'm grateful to the Nagaland Baptist Church Council for organizing this joint meeting of Nagaland legislators and NDCC leaders on the subject matter of clean election. When any function took place, the chief guest will speak and it will come out in the paper the next day that we all did. Or any speaker who, who has taken part in the function, it comes out in the paper. But reading the newspaper is quite different from interfacing like this, listening to each other, looking at each other. Interface is different from reading the newspaper. So I think this privilege given to us is a very rare opportunity for all of us that to sit and reason together with the church leaders. I, on behalf of the legislators and on my own behalf, congratulate the NBCC and welcome the bold step taken by the churches for checking corrupt practices in our election system. I am in full agreement with the NBCC that all is not well with the existing Nagaland electionary system. It is true that efforts have been made in the past to address this deeply rooted malaise. Yet, a tangible solution to effectively combat this evil has not been found, and we continue to suffer its ill effect unabated. It will do us well to recall here that the entire process of election, from the stage of filing nomination, contesting the election, declaration of result, to that of fixing the ceiling limit of expenditure per candidate, appointment of both general and expenditure observers for overseeing and reporting about the conduct of election, etc., is governed by the provision defined in the Representation of the People Act, 1951. The conduct of election rules, 1961, and the various standing instruction of the Election Commission of India issued from time to time, which is uniformly applicable all over the country for election to both the parliament and the state assemblies. The government, in order to plug loopholes in the system by falling back on experience gained over the years, stringent measures have been adopted in a seeming attempt to put to foolproof the system introduced by Election Commission of India. Yet, we continue to suffer from the evils of election, ele electoral mal malpractices. Therefore, conscious of this ever-growing managed studies on state funding of election expenditure and measure to curb criminalization of politics were undertaken and recommendation made. However, a tangible solution still eludes us. And despite efforts put in by various government electoral malpractices, is a phenomenon which continues to be prevalent in varying degrees in our country.
Likewise, in our state too, this issue has been much debated and continues to be debated with the Christian door reaching an all-time high high rate lately. Therefore, it was in this context that I had said that my government welcomes the initiative taken by NBCC, which is not only timely but must, most necessary. Whenever we talk of electoral malpractices in our state, it reminds me of the proverbial chicken and egg story, which one first or more bluntly put, who is to be blamed? The candidate, the agent, or the, vote, the voters? Realistically speaking, I feel each one has to apportion the blame equally. Otherwise, given the choice, who amongst us here will want to spend beyond the limit prescribed by election commission? But very sadly, the vicious cycle seems to go on unabated and at a very high cost. Cost in terms of highly negative impact <coughs> it has on our very social fabric, our moral values, and the standards of governance. When we closely look into the issue of electoral malpractice, it truly is an issue of colossal magnitude confronting each and every one of us. It therefore calls for pulling in our collective wisdom to tackle this menace once and for all. Towards this end, I can assure you that my government is prepared to leave no stones unturned in seeing that major record to ensure clean election is taken. But I also wish to make it clear here that given the nature of the problem which is required to be tackled, the government will need the active support and cooperation of NBCC and all other NGOs, hosts and students youth organization in dealing with this issue. I therefore take this opportunity to appeal to NBCC to be active partners in enforcing measures to check election-related malpractices, for which I have a few suggestions as under. Indiscriminate involvement on churches in checking distribution of cash by candidates agent beyond the ECI election commission prescribed limit. Assist, the, assist and participate in social policing and enforcement of the prohibition act, including substance abuse by voters during election period. Restriction on church workers from participating in any election related activity. Gathering including dedicatory pray, prayer services, etc. <coughs> church workers should take proactive role and the pul pulpit should be used more disseminating the message of clean, ethical, and informed voting. The church can also educate each member that giving and taking of bribes, inducement, gratification, 
in any form is not only against the ethics of Christianity, but is a violation of laws and rules of the land. Before, <coughs> before I conclude my short speech, I'm afraid short speech may be longer than the main speakers. <laughs> but when time is given like this, I also want to share what is in my mind. Only on 27th November 2017, FNR had conducted this uh, consultative meeting with all the tribal hobos and other NGOs at Chumukidima. And they have adopted resolution which we have come across through local media. Another attempt was made by the speaker and all the elected members except few could attend that meeting and pass a resource for early solution before election. Or the theme was that solution first or election second. If people so desire, that was the discussion and we have adopted results. Because elected member alone cannot prevent this election. But if the church organization, NGOs, the tribal hohos, the, under, the underground groups, Naga political groups, so desire that election should be postponed and solution should come first, then elected member will be readily available for any kind of situation and will cooperate the desire of the people. That was the decision taken in the meeting convened by the speaker. Another meeting was convened by me, inviting all the political parties. And all the political parties could turn up. And we have discussed elaborately about this Naga political shows. If Naga political groups and the tribal bodies desire that solution should come first, then I promise to all the political party that I will be the one to start that a decision will be taken by ruling government. If ruling government cannot take a decision, other political groups will always blame <coughs> the party who is in power. So today, I will take a decision. If you all agree, let us forget about election and solution first. That I have challenged before all the political parties. And they have agreed in principle. But people's decision should come first. That was the opinion shared among the political parties. The Honorable Speaker had convened another meeting on 4th December, uh, inviting all the tribal hobos, NGOs, students, organizations, that uh, decision of Naga people on the issue of Naga political problem that is going to take place on 4th December 2017 at Jochama. So, if you are invited, I think all of us should attend the said meeting and share our mind and interact with each other. Today, I want to share with the church leaders in presence of elected members that few 
few steps that we have taken and the step that now we are going to take is very crucial for all of us. In 1998, election boycott was called by NSN IM and Nagaho. But the Congress party <laughs> in power, Dr. S. Jamil, was not consulted for the state boycott election. And Congress party went ahead in filing of nominees because Congress party was not consulted. See, that was a mistake. Because one, once election commission announced the election, they cannot back there. But if situation is not conducive, there is a provision that election can be postponed. Which was manifested in the state of Gujarat in 2002 when the right was launched by the people against Modi, Modi's government. Election Commission decided to postpone the election by four months. Again, two months was extended. After the matter was settled, the situation was cooled down, then only election was announced. So these are the provisions we have. If people desire, everything is possible. But if we are not united, some people should not be made a scapegoat of the situation. If it is for all the party, I think we should decide for all. But if somebody goes in and some other political parties are left off, then who would like to be the victims of the situation? That's why the church involvement and this uh, poli political party, NGOs involvement is imminent. If the church leaders are serious about the solution, then this is the right time. Since the situation today is different from what it was then. Why I say this? We have three, four points of this uh, advantage for for Taka people today. <coughs> Number one, one may say anything outside or inside the legislative assembly, but inside the house we do not have opposition party. There is no opposition in the Dalai Legislative Assembly. That is one advantage that we can take a decision unanimously. <coughs> Another advantage is that today all the Naga nationalist groups, political groups, they have signed a ceasefire agreement. The dialogue is on, except NSNK, which we are still trying to convince them to come <coughs> back and sign the ceasefire agreement. And the third point is that, unlike in the past, if the three neighboring states, Assam, Manipur, and Arunachal Pradesh, are consulted by the Indian government. They are prepared to listen to both sides. That is the issue of Naga political problem and the government of India. In the past, during my no, almost four years experience as uh, chief minister, I have come to the hurdle that Manipur Chief Minister, Assam Chief Minister, when we, when we open the topic of Naga political issue, they don't want to discuss and they don't want to even listen about this issue. And they used to walk away. But today's situation is different from that situation. Because the three states, Arunachal, Manipur, and Assam, 
these three state governments are under the same party, that is Moji government, BJP government. So situation is different from that point of time. That is what I could make now. So if Naga people really want solution, if Naga people desire that there should not be any more underground groups in our state, then I strongly feel that this is the opportunity for us to overcome all these hurdles. Hekani, as uh, rightly mentioned, our youth could not be accommodated because there is no space for investors to come to our land. For you and me, we can survive by giving something to other ground or not giving also you can survive somehow. But the big company or corporate groups who are real professional <coughs> who who used to run the business in true spirit cannot run the business by paying this illegal tax nine groups eight groups ten groups nobody can survive if one has to run the business in real time that is the reason no investors could turn up to invest in that Yesterday also, I had a long division with the, this U.S. company. They want to come and invest worth 400 to 500 crore project on this uh, green electricity. They will produce energy. We talked about pollution control, but they want to start pollution free. The project called Pollution Free. But I'm scared. The moment they come in, people will start asking these illegal things. Then they'll run away. This is our situation. That is why, if we, if we really think about solution for our present and next generation, this is <coughs> opportunity opportunity given to Naga people by God. I firmly believe that God has opened the way for Naga people. That is why we should think seriously and take a decision. Whether we should really go for election or we should postpone. Postponement as such is not available. But there is, as I mentioned, that there is a provision where election differ. This is what I want to share with you while talking about this clean election. Because it is correlated. If you really think about clean election, then we have to introduce with a new system. And a new system has to come out from the from the church and the NGOs. The guideline can be brought up. When Mizoram, Mizoram could conduct election under the guidance of the church, why Nagaland also could not follow the same method. But a decision, strong decision is required. And strong determination is required. And for that, true Naga political solution, a new system can be brought in. An illegal tax can be avoided. This is what I believe and then I want to share with the church leaders. <coughs> Friends, in closing, I wish to urge you that in our common fight against electoral malpractices, we may not be able to bring about changes <coughs> overnight. Everything from A to Z. We may not be in the position to change everything at a time. But our struggle should be relentless and unwavering. And let us 
sincerely hope that together we can create and together we can pave the way for our future generations. Thank you and God bless all of us. Well, uh, I'm sure we, God will open the way for us to also deliberate on the uh, issue in another time. And now, I would like to open to the members who would like to take time, either from the legislators, from the angels, or from the churches. Um, you may take a brief time to the point and uh, you know more people can participate. Please uh, take your own time. Thank you for giving us this beautiful day and opportunity to share the important issue pertaining to the welfare of our people and our society. As time constraint is there, I will not uh, address, but I want to straight away share a <coughs> few of my feelings in this uh, meeting. We, to my understanding, we are living in a society where we are trying to fix their responsibility with one another. But if we really introspect the system and the way that is prevailing in that land, I believe, except few believers and God servants, many of us are responsible. <coughs> Today, NBCC have sponsored this meeting to move for a clean election. And as uh, my leader of knowledge minister have said, we are for it. But whether the electorates are for it or not, that is a big question. And there has to be a meeting. But other than that, I want to just hurriedly share what kind of problem we have in our society. We all know, but let us refresh ourselves. Nagaland is said to be a Christian state. But simply, if we just Cite an example of a scheme within the northeastern state and Himachal in the northern part of the country. I think those are beautiful states to live in. But although we say that we are Christian state, the way we live displays uh, displays our way of life. Before we build a house, we need a strong fencing. Before the sunset, we need to close our gate. That shows where do we live. Two, we do not have sense of belonging. And here in our state, without government property and government assets, I think it is going to be very difficult to run the affairs of the state. The Mabri is one where all Nagas can live, and Kohima being our state capital, all Nagas can live. Other than that, except Keep real being sunk. I need not elaborate, but no other tribes are there. 
same examples in the Bordeaux or Kai and other districts. But look at the government buildings and the lands, how it is being vanished. Who is responsible for that? Today, as an elected member, we have to take the responsibility. But are we alone responsible for that or not? I will not set an example of other states, but out of eight northeastern North states, I'm told according to 2011 census, Meghalaya has about 24 lakhs of population. But I'm told they still have 68,000 government employees only. Manipur has about 27 lakhs population, but I'm told they still have around 69,000 uh, government employees. But today, we all know according to 2011 census, Nagaland State has 19 lakhs 87,000, I believe. Just a round figure. But actually, we do, do, we do not have 19 lakhs. It should be around 19, <coughs> uh, 15, 16 lakhs only. But roughly, we have 1 lakh 27 regular employees. And about 16,000 workshops employees with scale base, which is coming to 1 lakh 43. Government has again considered the demand of our government employees to implement 7 ROP. And once the implementation starts, it will cause us an extra, as per the calculation, by 882 crores in a year. Then where is the money for the development? I entirely agree with Mrs. Hegani about poor condition of the different departments. But I've been looking after the education department for the last four months. All over the state, in different district headquarters and the directorates. Directorate. There was 573 three teachers attached in the office. And there was shortage of teachers in different in many schools, so they were all detached. As of now, 70 of them have gone to court in different groups, 14, 14 groups. And department have to fight in <coughs> court. Most of the teachers we have detected that they are keeping proxy teachers. But they are being protected either by school education board or by the governors or by the elected members or by the important personalities in different work of life. And on the third, I had a meeting with SDO, DOI and all the <coughs> officers. And I have sent a format that each government servant uh, employees should sign an undertaking not to keep proxy teachers. And I have asked them to return to me three forms signed by the government employees, of the department employees, to bring back to the government. I don't know whether it will be successful or not. Unless we are committed to what we are supposed to do, we can never rebuild our society. Unless we have a sense of belonging, we can never protect the future of our generation. That is what I can foresee. It's painful. Yes, as a government, we may have our own shortcomings.
happiness. We may have our own limitations, but in spite of that, our people do not have the own, do not have limitations. The more they want, the more the more they have, the more they do. And that is where we are today. Honorable Minister and is here. But I'll just speak on his behalf also. Maybe we have around 6,000 road labels. Have you, have any one of you seen even a single labor on the road or not? They are not seen. And let me also put a challenge to our MBCC and our church leaders. Please do not ask 10% tight to those who do not work and bring the tithe in the church. May not be in your church, but in ch church where I have my enrollment, every ending of the year, they make, make the list who gives how much tithe in that year. I do not give, so my name is not there. But I do not deserve to give the list at the end of the year. We need to introspect ourselves. We need to caution ourselves. And I believe with this clean election campaign, we need to take back our fingers pointing at one another and then put our heads together to make our society a better society. And lastly, you have given a lot of points how to move for clean elections. Supporting our honorable chief minister, we are for it. But whether the churches can start in line with your campaign and our willingness to support that. With your apology, in my last five elections, I have also come across that some of our agents used to say, Pastor is not, has not shared with me, but he has so many voters in his house. Why not you do something? And sometimes we do that. But that never come back to us with a message that Pastor doesn't want that. Let, let us be very frank to ourselves where we are today. We don't want, as, as much as possible, we want also want to give more of our time to serve the people. But when the election starts, we do not know when the sun rises and when the sun sets. We do not know the day and the night and that way we spread. And we also welcome the campaign that is going on. Therefore, in support of this, I have also shared a few of my thoughts. But, with the apology, please see around Kohima how government buildings are being snatched. How government buildings are being being squeezed. Who is responsible for that? How government will function? How government will run? There is no government lens. And even in the, in the government purchase lens, the so-called 
the, re, uh, the original landowners do not give chance to the government to the, make its own programs and decision to <coughs> run the defense of the states. Therefore, our society is on the crossroad. Let us put our heads together in prospect ourselves and move out from that illness and build a better society with this few of thinking. Just to supplement what our honorable chief minister and honorable minister have touched but could not uh, fully touch of what church leaders can understand. I just want to supplement. You see, we are today we are talking about political solution. Now, our chief minister also have touched about that. We have seen, we have experienced, and we know that somewhere something has gone wrong. It has gone wrong. And if we are to continue with this present trend, then it is not good for the younger generation. That is why we are talking about political settlement. So, if there can be a settlement to meet the present election system is not appropriate for us. Now, a person has to concentrate only in his constituency. And some, you know, the least, <coughs> in some constituency, they will have uh, 10,000 voters, some 15, some 20, some even 50. These grievances are also there. And we have met a system in such a way that even if we only concentrate in our constituency, he knows that he or she will be elected again. And it is very difficult to choose a better leader of <coughs> But be like the, just not like the American system or say German system. I think German system. Uh, you see, a person to become a member of legislative assembly, if he or she can have a majority of votes from the whole state, then we can choose a good leader. In that case, one has to go to each and every district with his programs and policies for the district, for the whole state. But now, some or something, if we allow this president then to continue the system, maybe. But anyway, it is worth to try. Whereas in other, like Meghalaya and Mizoram, where, where, where it is still successful, I think we can also, we can also <clears throat> try and then it, it will be successful. But one thing I want to tell the our church community is that church community is that this electoral role electoral role unless we clean up this electoral role then it will be very difficult to clean up the system. But once your electoral role is clean if it is clear then I can say that your 70% of your mission is success. Because when the electoral role is wrong, the system is wrong, now a person is having five voters in a family. But for us, we are not bringing the person that having five voters. We have the whole electoral, electoral list. And his name has been enrolled in Two places. So a person is having 15 votes. So we are targeting that 15 votes. From there, corruption starts. Another is the main conflict, proxy vote between village, tussle, 
It is just because of that proxy war that <coughs> have been entered. Unless we clean up that system, it will be very difficult. And now, this electoral lease, electoral roll, the electoral roll will be out by 21st or 23rd January. The final electoral roll. Now, I don't know in other districts, but in my district, last time when we have a discussion with the NBCC, I mean the CDCC, we are talking about the electoral roll. If this electoral roll is clear, clean, and if there is no double enrollment, <coughs> triple enrollment, then there will be less conflict in the village also. And then this public also will try to support. But when electoral vote is out on or by 21st or 23rd January, if we cannot clean up that system, public will come to know that uh, till now that electoral roll, you cannot do anything. And then in that case, public may not give corporation as much. That is what I could foresee. So once this electoral roll is clear, so I should be very, very grateful because for the politicians, even if we want to clean up the electoral roll, there are some practical difficulties. We will, we will try to put our own man and then we will try to flush out the other. So these are the practical difficulties. But if the church, if you have some representative, <coughs> if you can have a very close door discussion with the election commission, and then, and then, if you can go into thorough detail of this electoral law, then it will be of great help. And I said, if this is done, then your 70% of your Mission E will be success. Thank you. June 22nd. Uh, I do not know if this agreement was signed to be effective from which date. But now for we as legislators, sitting members, and the intending candidates, this has wrecked up the electorates, not making us asleep. I have a, I used to have a visitor's part, part of Belonging to my community and my constituency and others. Not less than 100 people in my house. From morning, then after office, in the office. And everybody, the same person is asking money. Which I am. I am not in a position to contain this thing. Very recently, on night of November, I went to Sataka the Sataka Sports Association organized a sport, and all sports. I went there. Sataka is having three platinum jubilees along with Zemoto Town establishment. Church 75, <coughs> where I'm going to attend the meeting on the, the dead church program on 17th. Then high school 75, establishment of town 75. So we are packed with jubilees. I've been requesting the churches and friends. Yeah, celebrating this other guys having three kind of uh, <laughs> platinum jubilee. But in the first church is run away, church has run away from attending these people. There should be a church administration where the Christian people should be controlled to, uh, to have a limit. Yes, for sick. For certain difficulty, we are there to protect our people, we will do. But after this agreement, uh, the WhatsApp issue and uh, uh, the activists, the other unknown organizations are moving around. Because of you call clean election, they want to finish us before the election is announced. <laughs> so I want to know from which date it is effective. 22nd June is the signed agreement signed between the church and the the activists and others. So I want to know that which, from which that it is effective. Because election code of conduct is only 21 days. Maybe from early or later part of uh, uh, January. Because election, certainly election will be somewhere after 20 and 14 will be take place. So if we had mooted out, 
I think uh, for others, NBCC may not have many things to say, but our church, the youth front, the youth who are taking part along with the NBCC, I think they should be. Immediately direction should go. And I am just, I am sorry to say, but in my constituency, sugar and milk has spread across the country, house to house. I don't know whether voters have accepted the gift or not. You said here a thin point charter of uh, this thing, not, not like that. And I have been telling my people to organize a platform. Allow us to speak what you mean for Sataka when you are elected. And I for Kaito, for one, for years together I have been telling my people we have to change the electoral system. The mud practices, the corruption. You make your leader indebted, as uh, Mr. Sekani said. He will go on making up because he, can, he also has to survive. Some of us may not have uh, that much of liability, but many of us must be in trouble because of the requirement. We are happy that the NBCC and the young uh, intellectuals are coming up with this idea, which has to be endorsed. <coughs> but I just want to caution the activists, please go back to this extent. This 22nd agreement, June agreement is effective from which that it will be effective. Before, after finishing us or before we are finished. Whether you are going to rescue us or you want to allow the electors to finish us. Money, appointment. There is only two of them. If not appointment, you give money to buy. And I wish the activists and the NBCC should also see that today people are asking us to give us three lakhs, two lakhs to buy a course. Where they are buying that also should be checked by activists and the church. I don't know from where they are buying the course. We as a minister, we find very difficult that we don't have a course. But from the directorate or from the district, people are saying that we are purchasing a grade four course. Give us two, three lakhs. A particular name I will not mention, but in my Sadaka, to buy a post of SA. <coughs> Last year, I paid three lakhs, they put four lakhs, seven lakhs. So I said, you, you give me the identity of that fellow who is giving you this post. But they, they mind that I should not go to that extent. So then to practice, blame has come to the pollution. It has gone to the pollution. But in the grassroots, the one like thirty-five thousand or one like twenty-five thousand employees are not checked, but sixty of us is meant to be the scapegoat. We cannot be tools of the electorate. Faults are somewhere, mistakes are somewhere, but blame goes to certain personalities. I for Kaito, I used to have five years continuous election. I never avoid my people. I go constant to my constituency. I try to give the requirement what is possible in order not to make them astray. Whether they vote for me or not, I must see that during my time, I must give my constituency in such a consolidated position. Therefore, I used to try my best. I started my career from business. I still do contract or some other side business. Otherwise, how can a minister fit 15,000 electorates. My Sataka, after the election, when the NP election comes, we used to get together. After that, I have no party. Since 1998, up to that, I have no party except during election. I get, I get, I care for entire electorates. Therefore, it may be my ignorance, but I don't want to make my people hear and cry. That's why I used to try to put everybody into my this thing. But when election comes, if the multi-party system, so that, that too we cannot uh, deny anybody. But change is very good. <coughs> if I cannot do in our system, we should penalize what I have made committed wrong. But since our God is not the God who, who takes revenge, on, uh, on his own will like that. So we used to forgive, forgive, but 
Some people will try his best. Some people will try how much wrong he can do. Therefore, this is only an appeal to our uh, NBCC and the activists, particularly the Reverend in charge of uh, this clean election and Mrs. Hekani. I have been cursed so much even in the Vasa. Satwe was on the Mahima district like till 1959. In June 1959, Satwe was shifted to Zemoto, Mokokum district. And till 19 77 I contest. There is only a small jeep road from Satanka to Satwe, which is a 64, 54 kilometers. There is villages are not too much, but the area is so big. It is in the rock. I have covered in third village roads connecting the third villages. Forget about Satanka side, but Satwe side 11, which is in the outskirts. It is an EAC administrative area. Just see in the WhatsApp, I've been 40 years then, Kato has finished two, three hundred crores development of that area. That area was nothing, there was no, no, no budget for that area. That area had nothing at that. Till such time in 1997, I was elected. I was in full time in opposition, I had no budget. Hardly 10, 20 legs and then, So I could not do much, for which I lost 82 elections with a small margin, because I could not do much. So like that, things are going for some people to create image for your own and to get help to your people, but there is no differentiation about the personalities of People who doesn't do, along with the people who does, also is uh, blame. There should be merit. The case should be different from the, uh, people to people, area to area. And uh, we also will do, but uh, the church can only play its role because we are, all, we are not a believer, but since we are a relation in the church, so we claim ourselves to be a Christian. So when proclaiming Christian, Christian value should be adopted for all of us. We should be controlled by uh, that, uh, 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 the the Christian <coughs> culture should be adopted to all of us and we should be able to uh, at least minimize our wrongdoings with the fear of God. Therefore, the, I want to admit to the, the, this thing here, you have said many things, very good. <laughs> but nothing is impractical. So let us help each other, not waste our time, if we want to build at least some work out something for the next generation. <coughs> Today is only for the heads, not for have nots. Not how how burden he may be, but he has no person to contest. So we welcome this. But at least I think in, in letter and spirit, this will be translated. Mm -hmm. If you really need it. No the Kiman is Therefore, we all will join you in your endeavor and it is we, the leaders, the candidates who are going to contest also to be very careful. But unless you control your church and your people first, we are found to be very difficult. Election announced and so you go you visit all the ministers' houses, those who are in the station. And particularly in the old ministry, two ministers different. <laughs> All communities will come and meet him because they have certain problems. But in my in my house, like the last, just in the front of Assam Rifles Gate, I have a visitor not less than 100 people daily. And those 100 are asking only two options either service or money. <coughs> <coughs> and in fact, I'm being dealt with those because I don't want to send them back them empty handed. Come out from Sataka, come out from the Mapu, from Mokokumo, elsewhere. So, if this message should reach the people on time, I think uh, some uh, restriction will be there from the churches. Churches are pro propagating the content, clean election, but it has come to, it should be translated into practical. 
With this <coughs> 18 agenda, I will not write down since we have done it. You, I, I'm sure you will be able to do it. <laughs> Again, I want to just last endorse the Honorable Chief Minister's request for your church participation in Naga, so it's Naga. I happen to be a Naga political efforts minister and I'm in touch with many friends, along with friends. Cabinet has a responsibility, I have no responsibility, but whenever I'm assigned, I'm in touch with all the Naga and business. Everybody is willing to come back to a solution. Enough is enough. Therefore, church should give us a lead. You should give us a strength. Join us and encourage all different uh, kind of people who are agitating each other, who are deferring each other. So you only our people can be brought into one platform. Mind. Therefore, well, in those the two ministers request, I also would like to request the NPCC to take active part in this solution process, where our deliberation can be also translated in letter and spirit, or for which beyond that also what we don't what we don't expect also can happen in our land also if we are all together. Therefore, maybe this is my going to be my eighth election. Beyond that, whether I get chance or not, but God willing, if I am given the opportunity again, I want to be down to dust to work for the Nagas. I'm not a perfect man, but 75 percent I have a concern for that. <laughs> I want to be Simi, but I want to be a Naga. I don't want to be Simi. Therefore, let us try to come together and forge about Naga solution. So, with these few words, thank you so much. But I'm warning actually to be a little careful, and you have to. Uh, activate your people otherwise. Some people are misusing the platform. Therefore, this is good to be uh, like this in, in the gathering. Otherwise, if we speak to one to one way, we appear that that doesn't help much. That's why I just uh, took time to endorse the NBCC for you. Program. Last year, last time, I said about one and a half crores. Only on your simple provocation that. Clean air, no mess, nothing. Sataka, I said, I swear in the name of God, I have appreciated the NBC, NBCC last time also. <coughs> but I meant to save at least one and a half hours. Wasteful expenditure in feasting. So, like that, our economy will be remain strong. I can use any send about 900 crores. It's, it's not a matter of job for a small class, not like us. I'm going to get 30 crores fellow with that with the 30 village came black top and grow the living key. So those are the bees, as a proper stage to put our kind of ideas. Therefore, let us all put our head together and lastly, as I said, the NBCC General Secretary should not run away from solution. Please come forward and connect us if we have any differences. Make us together and let us push forward for Naga solution. With these few words, thank you so much. I would like to share the problems what the candidates now it is between the churches and the religious leaders. The clean elections is something new to the Nakas, which started as uh, our level member said sometime in the month of June. But I would like to share with all of you. In Nagaland, the election is the time for the people to earn money. Because what, what is the position of the Naga public is, people are very poor, and for them to earn money is election time only. So, whether a clean election will be successful in those areas, especially in remote areas, people are very poor, they have not seen even 1,000 rupees. Individually, many of them they have not seen. But when the election comes, the father of the house, the leader of the house, he will take the whole money from the candidate, and they will use for their expenditures. 
that this institution in Nagaland, in the rural areas, I think uh, people a little went up, you know, and in urban, urban areas, but really it is very, very poor. So how far this clean election will be effective in two cities? I think that need to be uh, discussed because our intending candidates, candidates, nobody will be in a position to speak about clean elections. If we started speaking clean elections, I think two scooters will go away from us. So the intending candidates shall have to keep mark that is the situation what we are going to face. Coming to the your aims, our, you have mentioned our aims. Here, to tell the truth, fight for the truth, and stand for the truth. It's very convincing. And we are really happy to see those kind of words. But I am telling you, <coughs> the Indian candidates who are going to contest in the nations, we will be met to be untruthful. Why? Because the people who are coming to us, they are asking money and the expenditure is already limited for all the candidates, but it is in terms of lax, but the expenditure is in terms of crores. <coughs> so we are not going to be an honest person. So that is one area where I think uh, since it is between the churches and the legislators, I think it is good to be, you know, discuss these kind of issues. Now, like our Hikili has said, youths, he feel that it is the right to ask money from the candidates. And that is not only the section of people, but the entire public, they feel that it is their right to ask money from the candidates. That is the mentality of the people. Therefore, how those people in the rural areas can be given the education on clean elections? This is a, it will be a very big I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, issue for us, but for those people living in the remote areas, the they, they do not know the clean elections. They will not know the meaning of clean elections. So the intention is very good, but people will refuse to understand these clean elections. So unless the churches uh, spend more time to educate the people from the public side, I don't think there will be people to educate the uh, people in the uh, uh, rural areas. So we depend on the churches. Anything, whatever you know, comes out of the church organization. I stood up just to share a few of my thoughts and also about some success and failures in this clean election campaign. First of all, I would like to give my sincere appreciation to the NBCC, not only NBCC but other churches or other denominational organizations who are involved in this clean election campaign. You cannot expect 100% achievement, but I think you should not be disheartened because challenges cannot be taken place overnight. But slowly, we have to go and we have to change our society. And we all have to think seriously. And as a leader, we have to change first. That is what I want you to say. In the last election, it was partially achieved some uh, up to up to a certain level when NBCC conducted clean election campaign as far as in my constituency is concerned for example stopping of uh, 
opening of camps in the villages, uh, passing of posters here and there, spreading of banners, and also <coughs> flow of liquors into the constituencies, and feasting is stopped. As such, uh, at least something has been achieved, and I believe even in other constituency also have, uh, must have achieved something up to a certain level. I wonder how the CEC is going to enforce your 18th commandment, like 10th commandment, because there are many things, even if we could we, we could not even follow the Ten Commandments given by God, but I doubt we will be able to follow the 18th Commandment given by the CC. However, we have to try, we have to give our best, and we have to support this campaign. That is what I want to share. In my constituency, the electioneering have started. The other day when CBCC had conducted a clean election campaign, I asked, when are we going to start this clean election campaign in the villages, in the churches, or in the constituency? They have no answer. Likewise, today I want to ask the NBCC or the CEC committee, when are we going to start? Because I have seen, including me and my rivals or my opponents, have started distributing money to the voters. And the church remains silent. That is why, when are we going to start? That is what I wanted to ask our members. Some months back, the Chagasan Baptist Church Council have conducted men's conference in Futuro. Around 3,000 delegates have attended, and many of them have signed a pledge to follow the clean election <coughs> campaign, to follow the 18th commandment given by the CC. But there's no sign of following their pledge. The cons have resigned and have started distributing money. And the politicians trust the decons to be more honest. That is why they have chosen the decons to be their agent to distribute the money. <laughs> These are the reality, the happening is going on. So I also would like to challenge the church also to be the church as well as the political parties to give more emphasis <coughs> on this clean election campaign. We have to educate more of our voters as well as, well as our church members. We need to aim beyond the election <coughs> because as uh, pointed by one of the honorable members, even after election, the voters keep on asking their vote share, instead of asking development. This is one area where we, we need to put the point in our uh, campaign also. We really have to check the multiple entries of voters in the Euro, as pointed by one, uh, some of our friends. This is the beginning of the electoral corruption. I know many people in my constituency also have got multiple entries. The election department is trying to check, but they are also failing. Means they are also facing difficult to check all such things. I think the church, the village council, need to keep. <coughs> more attention in this in order to check or to clean the euro. 
there <coughs> multiple multiple in, especially in multiple in, multiple entries as uh, chief minister has pointed out about the naga political issue with service election here it is my personal opinion that nagas have to think seriously at this juncture for naga political issue to me the solution will take time. I believe God will grant the Nagas demand in time. But we do not know when it will be given to us. We do not know when the solution acceptable to all the Nagas will be given to us. The NCIM have taken 20 years of peace talks. The other working group of six NNPGs have just started last month or this month. They have met an agreement on 17 November. Few groups are yet to start their talks with the government of India. We are talking about inclusiveness, honorable and acceptable solution to the Nagas. A solution cannot just hurry up within two, three months. Therefore, it is my opinion that we have to think seriously if solution did not come in time, even if the solution did not come in time, the peace talks have to be continued. And if peace talks have to be continued, whether it should be under President rule or under a popular government. I believe a popular government should support the peace talks. That is, that is my personal opinion. Thank you. As I observed, yes, there is a mess all over our place because of certain systems that is going wrong. We all are talking about the problems that we are having, well, the challenges that we are facing. But I think none of us have given us a little bit of solution how to tackle that issue. I think. Certainly we have a solution if we really agree to it. We all want corruption, uh, corruption to grow. Every day newspaper is flashed with the map, bombasting the government. But do we all have a green government or a green society? We all are talking about the corruption, corruption. Yes, I'm certainly, I fully 100% endorse the clean action and endorse the MBCC that is taking initiative. And I'm sure all my friends are ready to endorse the thing. But are we, are our voters will agree to endorse this? The biggest challenge is, are the voters going to endorse this? So I think we have to bring a change. And to do that, I think to have a corruption free, I think election, if we continue at this rate, I think we have next government we are going to have most corrupted government. Because soon after the election, the clean election as they known, the people at one of my seniors have said, they start swearing the MLS. <laughs> election election Logo. It is a very big challenge for all of us. There's no day, there's no night for us. And there's nothing more money or appointment. Which government, which people representative can fulfill all this? <coughs> so I think we have to look into it and I feel that if you want to have a clean government, election has to be deferred, whether there is political solution or not. Because we want to clean election means only when we spend less during the election as per stipulated by election commission, then only we can do something good for the people. I think we all and the church has a responsibility, spiritual, not only spirit, spiritual responsibility, but you have the responsibility that the People that Christian society should live a 
clean, corruption-free uh, life. And you, as a church member, people have a lot of respect. I think you can initiate this section by saying that the Nagas has enough, is enough. We want a better government, we want a better a change in the society. And to do that, <coughs> uh, deferment of election will be a better proposition. That's what I, I feel. Thank you so much. As a legislator, I think this meeting is arranged particularly for the benefit of the legislators or for the intending candidates in the assembly election. That's why I just keep the and I think this is one platform. Any legislator or we can also at least speak out our mind freely. Because we are all very timid in front of voters. If we have to talk about not parting with money or not helping them in cash, in kind, then we are nowhere, we are gone. Then, then we are finished. But uh, we have heard from many former speakers and they also have raised many good points. So here, I think this is something like that uh, quotation or uh, who will bail the camp on this free and fair election. I think this is what we are talking about. And in Nagaland there has been always a blame game. Legislators will blame the church or the voters or church will blame even the legislators so on and so forth. I will not uh, spend much time on that. But I think, though I am not a good Christian, anything that we do, I think, as a Christian, and as he dominantly dominated the uh, Christian state, I think anything that we do, or we imbibe on, I think it should be on Christian values and principles. So, towards this, when we say we are a Christian state, or predominated Christian state. I think all our actions, all our activities, all our indulgences are very on Christian. I personally feel like that. And which is a very sorry thing. And it's high time we change. I think when the 53rd or 40 year old having assembly election. For me I'm a first timer. I have very little experience as a candidate. But that doesn't mean I am not politically conscious. We have had many elections in the last so many years. And it is good that we are late to be talking about clean, free and fair elections. But it is always late than never. And I think towards this, NBC has taken a very good uh, step forward. And as some former speakers have said, I think overnight we cannot change what has become cancerous in our society. But I think we have been also achieving some commendable thing, and I think we have to encourage this. And as a legislator or as a public leader, for me, I am for this clean and free and fair election. So we have to continuously speak to our people, even in our respective churches, as a Christian to our society, to our youth that we have to, sooner or later, we have to go for clean, free and fair election. We have to change our mindset. And this is the responsibility of all of us. And to change our society or to have that expected, desired result of clean, free and fair election. I think this has to change from an individual. It has to start from a family. Then you have to share with your neighbors, your village, your assembly constituency. Then comes the larger spectrum of the societies, your tribe, and then the Nagas together. I feel like that. So this, we expect that the NBC Great Venture, we wish you all the best and in this. We are solidly behind this, but as I have said, Sometimes when we speak to our voters, I'm not saying uh, we have the worst quality of leaders in the state. But when you talk to a voter, when you talk to your supporters, when you talk to your party man, the first thing when we talk about who is going to contest, who is going to participate in any election, they say, 
ऋतु मानो तो क्वालिफिकेशन भी है पर्सनालिटी भी बना है तार तो सोसाइटी के काम करा मानो ये देगा है कि तो ताकि पैसा कम दिया जो ताकि गिरे दे पैसा करने ही गिरे हो सी इमेजली एवरीबॉडी जांच ऑन दैट टाइम ही इज गुड इन नाइन मेंस बट बिकॉज़ ऑफ मनी because of not having sufficient money he will not be that has become the mindset of everybody starting from parents down to the smaller kids in our area so this is one thing i think we have to clear this spell out to the voters to the society that one aspect i have seen and even the state election conduct machineries Let us what start from district administration, then come to the sub regional level, then to the administrative headquarters. Even those who are responsible for enumeration of hero, or even those who distribute uh, hero uh, identity cards like BLO, block level officers, they are also making money by see collecting. Voters ID slip, and they are selling to candidates. They are selling to agents. So even the state machinery, who conducts the election, even this area one, I find very very important. We have to check this. So all of us here, if we want to make free and fair election, it is not just about buying votes or selling votes. There are many elements, very dirty elements are involved. So we have to check all this. So that is my one. And, and What about our national workers? They will always issue that government has declared that we will not participate in any state assembly election or in any election. <coughs> the government they will always issue such orders. But when we go to different different corners, any parts of Nagaland, you will find them there. The, see, star campaigners. They are the ones who will ask for bigger sh share of money. I can bring you these many votes. I have many votes under my control. They don't say any money, but under my control. I do not know what they mean by that. I'm very sorry, but we have to also tell our national workers. At good times, they'll say state government is a puppet government. But we are for sovereignty. Whether we represent a country like that. But come election, these things are also very much happening in the ground. So I also want NBCC and those who are for this clean, free and fair election to also dwell on this. And then yes, since election is coming and with the visit of ECI groups, I think general assembly election has become very imminent. So. Under the pressure of my party office bearers or supporters, within one month we have been having two meetings and two picnics. <laughs> Then at least there are also one two good persons in my group. So when we share in that, some of my supporters will say, "NBCC has given a challenge. It has given a call for free, fair election." So I think let us also ponder over this. Let us elect a good candidate so that he will develop our area, our villages, our constituency. He will look after the welfare of the youth. He will look after the upliftment of the economy of our country. I found one gentleman. I think who must be both fearing or who must be well, somebody who has really sympathy on me. <coughs> Because my people, though I try to please them, I have earned the good name of Mr. Miser and Mane. But again, I find I am always taking every month loans after loans. But on a voice from the NGO, because most of our uh, member of the legislative assembly have spoken. But I think it will not be complete if in this discussion, if uh, our point of two is not stated. Huxley. A thinker once said that a society which cannot live with its vice, nor 
is ready to accept it. It's cured. It's headed for doom. Our society doom for the vice that ails us is this election. We may disagree on many matters, but one thing as per the discussions that we had, we can agree. And I vouch for our Honorable MLAs who have stated that 70% of this problem of clean election can be solved if there is clean electoral. In various platforms, we have already stated that in Nagaland, we hardly have 7 lakhs to five, uh, 8 lakhs at the most. But according to the latest release in the month of October 3rd, 3rd October, we have 11 lakhs 63,000 rupees in all voters till date. So unless and until we clean the system, unless and until as NGOs, we also collect our voice together and state this, that we rectify and cleanse this double entry or the uh, multiple entry of voter <coughs> list, our problem is still half done. So, it is my humble plea to our NGOs and with the cooperation of our MLAs, what is in our power to do? Let us keep our mind and heart in supporting the NBCC to see that the final acts is granted by seeing that the purity of the electoral roll is maintained. Last but not the least, maybe the political deferment, the election deferment, as per the announcement given clearly in the newspaper this morning, I think it's more likely that we may head for election in the month of March. But to defer is for our legislators to decide. It is a political decision which lays in the table of our central government and our political leaders. Maybe when the talk is at this stage, and election is being held. My only thought is that whatever we have achieved thus far, it may be a distraction like the golden apple. And whatever that has been uh, ailing our society may once again be rejuvenated. All that has been done by NGOs against corruption, against all these ill practices and taxation may just go down the drain if we continue to have this election. But one thing we can be sure, as NGOs, we have a very good reason to state that election should not be held until we cleanse this voters' list. Again, the electoral rolls are cleaned. This, we should uh, make it clear to the press. And I am representing various NGOs today as a representative of Business Association of Nagas. I would like to state that we will go all the way, all the way under the leadership of NBCC. As you have already stated in church and as a firm believer, you have already taught us that we should trust the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul and with all our might. So we believe that the NBCC will provide leadership at this point of juncture for Nagas. With all your heart, with all your soul and with all your might. Don't give us half leadership that will not sail us through the Across the, across the river. Give us leadership which will sail us through, not for the sake of it, but to see that we bring changes in our society that, is, that needs healing. Otherwise, we will be like Latukia, the church which is neither hot or cold. A lukewarm church or a lukewarm believer will be spitted out, as the Bible says. So let us not be there. For us, as a voice of the NGO, we are all out to see that the Above, Almighty will give you the wisdom and for us to sail through this storm, through this juncture where Nagas are looking up to your leadership, the church leadership and 
to political leadership. This coming together in itself is for us to decide for the common future that we all share. Thank you. Sitting members, government have spoken, and I feel that even expert parliamentarian also should say something because I have been one of the signatories in this clean election in 1982, and I have seen the result of it. In 1982, I had to fight election against the chief minister at that time, Mr. Jasukia. And in 82 also, this clean election campaign was uh, initiated by the church. And it was in the UBC church. I think UBC pastor, one of the UBC, now present pastor is here. But it was in the UBC that the different political parties were invited, had a meeting like this, and then we were asked to send pledge. So the party, at that time I was in Congress party, and Congress party uh, entrusted me to uh, represent the party in that meeting, and we had a pledge for the clean election, not to use alcohols and liquors and money and unfair means of election. But unfortunately, as already Chief Minister also has pointed out to the church that during this election, even our church workers, not the reverend and pastors as I knew at the time, but the lay, lay church workers became political agents and they started actively working for the candidates. And so <coughs> that during that election also all our commitment failed and there was unfair election to get action. But here this clean election campaign is a really very big task for the NBCC and all the other church members. I think the greater part of this responsibility will have to be borne by the church in educating our church members and public. The heavy the burden will lie on the church this time that we must make sure that the church workers, I don't say the uh, ordained pastors and reverends, but especially lay workers in the church, the deacons, deaconese, or active members, elders, should be uh, warned <coughs> or be advised not to, not to, not to take participate, no. They may participate, but not by unfair means. Not by becoming agents and then uh, distributing money on behalf of the uh, uh, candidates. But in this election, clean election, I feel that there is marriage and demerit. The demerit is that you may invite, invite more candidates. Because I think that clean election means that with less money, you can go into election. And in this time, you may even have fake candidates. When money was demonetized and the new uh, currencies were printed, even immediately fake money was printed. And many two thousands fake money. So likewise, even this time also, when you have this clean election, campaign, then there may be more candidates and also fake candidates. Why I said fake candidates means they may come into the fray in order to bargain with the prospective candidates. Yeah. That happened and they will happen. <coughs> that will happen. They will join the fray in order to bargain the tensions. So now we are targeting in our mission in 
propagating this clean election, the politicians. Um, uh, one of the, our cabinet ministers were asking, when do we start this clean election? Or even our former speak, uh, speaker, uh, MLA, he also said, when do we start clean election? Actually, for the incumbent can, uh, sitting members, the election process starts the moment they are elected. Because when next election also they will go. So naturally people, the public and the voter expect that they should be doing something for them. Then only the next election will vote for them. So our uh, sitting members, incumbent members have to be very careful in looking after their welfare. The other thing is that when do elections start? It's not when the official uh, uh, election department announced this uh, election as already now election, chief election uh, from all India. I think Deji has already come and said election will take place. But for a candidate, the moment he decides to contest, the election system starts. For him, once he decides, the election starts. So, whatever in order to win, he has to do. I stand here by way of wrapping up to <clears throat> bring some uh, concluding remarks. But before I uh, begin, I want to clarify one detail. Resolution between uh, the 17 point resolution it was between the church and the political parties. There were no activists. He kept mentioning activists, and so I think that needed to be clarified. Um, we are here not to blame our leaders, but the, the objective is to reason together. And um, as Dr. Kihu mentioned, the church is not against political parties, it is not against candidates and politicians. But in, as Christian politicians, the church is here to appeal to your voice of conscience. The voice of conscience given by God. That is our entry point. There are at least four facts. Reviewing what we have covered, I think four facts that are established. Number one, this In other words, the sins, the devil, the sins, the evils of election is much more bigger than the devil and Satan himself. Satan Burabi Damaraji. Election Laga Piado. So itu election to clean election, total transformation to Nabarebu, but generations no. However, we want to make a bold beginning. That is our assertion. Second fact. Several factors have led to the abuse of election in Nagaland. There are several historical factors. We cannot go into those details. But today, we can all agree that elections, the way it's conducted, is killing all of us. Isn't it, sir? It is the killer of Naga society. And um, <coughs> we need to combat the corruptions of election with full force, but at the same time, we need a spiritual power. There was somebody lecturing in Dimapur, and uh, actually a principal, Uhimadi principal, I say, and then uh, she said, the mess in Nagaland, Nagaland now problem though, to correct that, it would take a miracle. Just, not just our commitment and efforts, but Miracle in society change for environment. And so this is where the power of the word of God comes in. This is where the church would like to come in. S 
second, second factor, uh, again, every system is affected by the election. It, I don't want to repeat, but I, I really do want to reiterate some of the points. There is almost all the problems that we say, uh, see today, as Hekani said, is related to, to elections. Forget about the future. We are dying. Our society is dying. It's what we call social death. Manu to piraisi, fortune to piraisi, will be it's dead. Not even one of our institutions are standing still. Second fact. Election laga abuse kurado. All of us are part of it. Not just me, not just our CM. All of us, we are all victims as well as perpetrators of this situation, including the church. Kilimani, Kunuba Parado, when she last election did do it, Morganto, Tikun Gangi, we saw the path for the day she did because. The coons will faithfully distribute the money. They will not pocket. I, I, I'm not trying to demonize the church, okay? But the point is, church is also not perfect, right? Even Papino. But we come here with a spirit of collective responsibility and repentance. Now, the fourth fact. The solution also lies in all of us. Not just the legislatures, not just the church, but all of us. And the real enemy is within us. Solution will come when, as Christians, all of us, choose to allow God to recognize the supremacy of God in the way we conduct elections and in everything that we do. So, on behalf of the church, we want to impress upon our dear leaders that without divine guidance, history proves it that we accomplish nothing at this point. As uh, Dr. Kingo noted in his welcome address, we have two choices to begin and strengthen our journey of transformation or to stay where we are and start blaming each other, keep blaming each other. I believe all of us gathered here today are committed to change our society and the government. And here, my dear respected leaders, you as people chosen by God, the anointed ones, we want you to lead Live by doing what is right, as Dr. Kilo noted. Why do we really want to come after you? Why do we want to bank on our leaders? There are many reasons, but I want to highlight only two. First, there is a numerical factor here, statistical factor. Could be 19 lakh something voters and 100 plus intending candidates. <coughs> Should we wait for the voters to change? No, it's going to take time. So, it's much more easier for the intending candidates, 100 plus, to change and lead. Very pragmatic. Second, our society is very hierarchical. We look up to leaders, we respect, we look up. Our people will follow. And here, the church, Catholic Church, NCRC, NBCC, our role is to come in and support you morally. Tell our people not to go for money, not to attend camps. The church is here to support you, but it is you. You have to model the leadership that we so need today. Even from a pragmatic point of view, all of you are on Facebook. We were so happy uh, the G20 
chief minister's office went on Facebook and then invited young people for breakfast. That's a normal initiative. What do you mean? Social media has said eh? anything that is happening in Nagaland is up. There is already a social revolution, online social revolution to which I should know. In physical, it don't translate probably in the body. Why ask? Because anything kun paraki mystic koreshe, it do ulai kina asko. So social media di ulang ko, RTI asi, there are so many uh, anti corruption groups. To kun kun ulai shi bulibe, especially from next election, who is having a problem in the body? Pragmatic point of view. I heard actually from some sources that actually some families are still struggling to recover their expenses. Honestly, that's the situation. But I'm not blaming the legislators here. I tell the public, you don't have any right to go for protest and shout because you have sold away your right. We have sold away our right. We saw the ship, the for us all. The ministers, the MLAs can do anything. They have purchased you. The challenge that we want to put to our leaders today is even if you think you would lose, actually, <coughs> choose the right thing. For example, and Nana people will remember you for your integrity and honesty, for the sacrifices that you bring to change our society. And as God's chosen people, our dear respected leaders, the opportunity is in your hands. The opportunity to build our people, our society is in your hands. We can talk we can only pray for you, support, tell our congregations. It is in your hands. And so for the sake of our land, as Hikami said, for our people, for the future generation, we want you to lead. God, our Heavenly Father, the glory and honor belong to you. We thank you for this beautiful day that you have brought us together in this manner to discuss for the benefit of our people, especially the burning and the concern which is laid before us all. Father God, I pray that whatever we have discussed, whatever we have learned from the different speakers, Father, we are going to put into the practice. Lord, we look to your face that nothing is impossible for you. When we look at the situation, when we look to our Nagaland, there are so many problems, so many impossible. But when we look to God, there is possibilities. Therefore, Lord, we look to your face and we commit our discussion, our decision into your hand. We commit our Naga people, our Naga leaders into your hand. We commit the election campaign <coughs> into your hand. And also, Father God, I pray, as your word says, that your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are better, higher than our thoughts. Lord, therefore, I pray that even the Naga political solution is in your will. Then we pray that, Lord, help us that this solution will take place soon as possible, Lord. We even commit each and every one who has come and take the part, and Lord, as we are going to depart from this place, we commit our life into you, your, your mighty hand once again, that be with us and guide us. In Jesus' most wonderful name, I pray with thanksgiving.